morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whenever this reaches you, this is Matthew Robert Payne from Australia. This is a video called My Supernatural Encounters of Heaven, Part 1. If it goes to more than one part, otherwise it'll just be Encounters of Heaven. Uh, there's many people who buy great books of people's encounters of heaven. There's a book I've read, uh, Mary Kay Baxter's book, Divine Revelation of Heaven. I've read a book written by some Chinese orphans uh, in, in an orphanage. I think uh, Roland Baker's grandfather uh, ran this Chinese mission and a whole lot of Chinese guys went to heaven and hell. I've read a book about Visions Beyond the Veil, I think that book is. I've read other people's encounters of heaven. Uh, so it's an exciting subject. Uh, certainly a lot more exciting when you've been to heaven yourself. Uh, so I want to take uh, this opportunity to uh, share with you uh, some of my encounters of heaven. Um, uh, the Lord's told me many times I've walked through heaven without even knowing I have. Um, I've lived a life with a lot of pain, a lot of crying, a lot of tears, a lot of loneliness, a lot of rejection, a lot of hurt. And many times I've just been walking down the street and I've heard a song in my mind playing and suddenly I've just started to cry and started to cry a little bit of happiness and then uh, soon enough I'd be joy and I'd be happy and I'd be over my sad part and uh, the Lord's told me, Jesus has told me that uh, many times I just entered heaven and didn't realize that I'd just walked through heaven when I heard the song playing um, but these are some of my major encounters to heaven one time um, I was with uh, I'm just looking at the time to see if I've got enough time. One time I was with a counsellor in a prophetic church and uh, it was a form of counselling and prophetic working and he held my hand and he said um, the Lord is going to show you a picture now. I want you to uh, tell me what you see and I said I'm in heaven. He said, really? Now? And I said, yeah. He said, what can you see? And I said, Jesus is in front of me. And uh, he said, yes. And what is Jesus saying or doing? I said, Jesus is taking off his cloak and he's putting it around me. And uh, he said, okay, and what's Jesus saying? I said, nothing. He said, what's he doing now? I said, he's taking off his crown off his head and he's putting it on my head and uh, the counsellor says that's good what is he doing now and um, I was silent but Jesus took off his ring a ring off his ring finger uh, in the Jewish tradition called a signet ring and he put it on my finger um, I didn't tell the counsellor this part because it's starting to get too emotional uh, Jesus Christ, uh, what he was doing was almost the same picture of what the prodigal son's father did to the prodigal son. The uh, prodigal son's father gave him his best robe and gave him a signet ring, I think, and gave him a pair of sandals. Um, a signet ring in the Jewish tradition was when the father passed authority over to the son the son could use that ring as a stamp, as a seal, and uh, sign the checks and sign the envelopes and do the official documents with that ring seal uh, and exchange the father's money. Uh, that was a very emotional thing for me, uh, Jesus doing that. Um, then I said, what's Jesus doing? He said, what's Jesus doing now? And I said, he wants to take me into the throne room. And uh, he said, so are you going? I said, no, I can't go. 
and uh, he he says why and I started to cry and I said I'm not worthy and he says what do you mean you're not worthy Jesus wants to take you into the throne room he said he wants to take me to meet his father that uh, to the non-Christians who might be watching this that's God himself and uh, I said I'm not worthy and um, the counsellor said, of course you're worthy. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Uh, you're born again. Uh, you're one of his children. Of course you're worthy to see the Father. And I uh, said, I'm not going. He said, Jesus, what's Jesus doing? I said, he's got hold of my hand. And he said, why aren't you going? You're worthwhile. I said, I'm scared. And he said, what for? Uh, at the time, I was sleeping with prostitutes. I uh, uh, had a two weekly addiction every fortnight, every two weeks when I got paid, I'd go and see a prostitute. It was only about um, five days since I'd seen my last prostitute, and I certainly didn't feel like a person who was worthy to be in heaven, and certainly wasn't a person who wanted to meet God in that condition. Um, I'm just looking at the time, and um, and uh, I said I'm scared because I, I really, you know, honestly, people who aren't Christians or people who don't go to church believe if they go to church, the church might they might get struck dead in church. They feel bad about their sin. They don't want to come and meet God in a holy place. Well, let me tell you, folks. When you're in heaven and Jesus it wants to take you to meet your Father, you may think, all of you who are listening, you may think you're ready to meet God, but I, I tell you that there's not many of you that are ready to meet God when you really think about it. Are you worthy to go in and meet God? Anyway, regardless of how you feel, that's how I felt. And the counsellor talked me through it and said, Jesus has got your hand. He's, you're not going to go into the throne room and get wiped out by God. Jesus wouldn't take you in there to wipe you out. He'd send you straight to hell if you uh, were in, uh, not in the right place with Jesus. Jesus is going to walk you in to meet his father and his father kill you. Go with Jesus. And um, I... Uh, With trepidation, I started to step forward and uh, we came towards these two doors which began to open and I'll share the rest of the vision in part two.